All right, welcome back to another uh, basic training wizard uh, art tutorial focusing on the structure of the anatomy. Um, and this episode, we're going to be looking at uh, action scenes by Jim Lee. And um, he says each figure makes a statement and brings with it a sense of life and movement. While we still have to remember proper anatomy, if we lose the overall flow or arc of a figure's movement, then we lose a lot of that figure's impact and power. Many artists think of the body as connected parts. That's fine, except by doing that, we sometimes overlook trying to make a general forceful statement with the figure. Only after we determine a figure's gesture should we break it down into parts. The more we can retain our initial arc, the more we maximize our figure's dynamics. You should try to have one or two arcs that define your figure's overall movement or gesture. Establish simple arcs flowing through the shoulders and arms or through the arc of the legs. The greater the arc, the more energy your figure will have. Notice how figure A has more zing to its step than figure B. Note that the more we simplify our drawings, the more they'll resemble very simple arcs. So he has a figure A and a figure B here. Um, so let's uh, see what we can come up with with these two, two figure arcs here. So we have figure A, which is... Um, We have this figure here, and then we have this figure here to this. So this figure has more of an arc, and you have like this is like our head. And like this arm's going back and this arm's like going forward, like punching forward or thrusting forward. And then this art, this leg is, is going forward and this art leg's going back. And then if we go with this one, this one looks more stiff. Um, so this is pretty much like the same pose except it's stiffer. Let's see, let's see what we can come up with with these two gesture drawings here. Uh, so, all right. So we have our arcs here. So let's try and draw our figure here. This um, leg is going into foreshortening, and this leg is coming back. Uh, 
Um, so this would be the arc, one of the arcs here. arm looks like it's coming back and just draw some planes for the muscles here Um, and then he talks about Kirby and Buscema and um, Bridgman um, and how uh, Kirby and Buscema um, balance reality um, with uh, action that works and served as cornerstones for Amer American American comic books uh, and the figure work and talks about Bridgman's guide to life drawing uh, locking lock some doors for him um, how to draw the human body how it twists and turns um, so now we're going to go into head on down something as simple as lowering your figure's head can increase his action dramatically look at figure C and D notice how the lower head in D creates more energy in the arc of the shoulders and a better motion arc from the first and a better motion arc from the fist through the shoulders all the way to the other fist. The two pictures are virtually identical except for the head. Notice how something as simple as a slight movement can make a big difference. It's pretty much the same figure. So we're gonna, first we're going to draw this figure here. Lunging forward. You know. Um, Shoulder here is way down, lowered here. And this guy's coming back. And you see like a hint of the leg here. It's, it's going back in space, so you don't see uh, a lot of it. So there's our body here. Clavicle. 
Okay, so here he draws the head here. Running. Okay. It looks fine. You know. It does. It looks fine. But then if we... even more like almost down to here it gives it more oomph uh, you see this in a lot of Jack Kirby's work Just gives that oomph to it. Okay, an upside. Uh, similar, similarly, in figures E and F, the overall gesture of arc flowing through the figures is much stronger in F. Uh, with his head tilted down. Oh, uh, it's not tilted down. It's tilted up. Uh, there is just more of a sweeping motion. His arms seem to be exerting a lot more force, doesn't it? So he has X, he has an X, a Z, a C, X, Y, W, X, Y, and Z. Let's try, let's put them like side by side here. So I'm going to just draw just some lines here to give me an idea where I'm at. So we're going to draw this figure, it's kind of going here, but this figure is going a little, a little, like even more. So let's go, this is like a Bridgman, kind of a Bridgman lesson here, we've got our, uh, chest, and then our waist, and then our legs here, that's going back. Twisting, the arm comes around. This arm bends, and this head is up here. Kind of twist over. forward going back into space and this arm is like foreshortened here he's like throwing a fist just lighten that up a little bit This one, there's more going on here. So, let's start with the arm here. Because the arm is pretty much the same. The arm's going to be where we're measuring from. And these are really coming out. Now 
This leg is going like this. But his head's not going down, it's still up. And then this arm's like coming back here. Like so you could see. Um, the difference here. Um, he has, um, he has um, these lines going on here. Um, so this is the X, and here's the X. So the X's are pretty much there. Here's our X, and then here's our Z, our Y. W should be coming out here. There's a W. <clears throat> then we look at this one. We have our X. Okay. Our Y. Which should be right around here. Y. And you can see there's more width here, uh, more width here. So the, they're just more width. There's more. There's more of a turning going on there. Um, it just it just looks more more physical. Uh, And more energetic mass appeal. Artist George Bridgman spoke of the human body as a series of connected body masses. He would take the torso and pelvis as connected units which rotated in relationship to one another almost as if they were socketed parts. By moving these masses as far apart as possible without making the body seem overly elongated, we can make the figures more dynamic. Just as widening your stance gives you more power, moving the torso center of mass as far apart from the pelvis center of mass creates more power in your figure. Now apply the same principle to the placements of the hands in relation to the torso, the feet, and pelvis. In these two figures, I've labeled the centers of the masses as torsos X, the pelvis Y, the hand Z. Note the hands relative position in relation to points X and Y in two different figures in the two different figures and you'll start to see the power you get by spacing your centers of mass out. Again, we start with our torso, pelvis, our arm here, our head, we got this arm going back, All right. uh, this leg going forward, This leg going, now this leg's going back, and this leg's going forward here. Just your typical drawing of uh, you know, it looks cool here. I can't complain. This looks cool. Um, got the arm here. Got your fist. Now here, it's elongated, so um, so we have this part here, we have this part here, and if you elongate them more, 
without making it look too distorted, you get a more dynamic figure here. <coughs> so let's try it. So there's our torso. And our head here and arm. back and just elongate it right here. See I'm running off paper here. I don't know if I can get the whole thing in here. Yeah I got enough room I think. And then this comes out. So you can see how much more dynamic that is by just elongating everything without too distorting it distorting it too much. There's her shoulder. But Bridgman is one of the greats. And I did a study night George Bridgman, Bridgman study night um, list too. I need to go back and revisit So you can see, you know, he's got the X, Z, and Y. Let's do it here too. X, Z, and Y. Um, and you can see by elongating them. You can um, create a dynamic, super heroic action pose. I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers, and I really appreciate the support and the love that you give me. And if you like what you see, please leave a comment. It helps with the algorithm. But also, please, if you're new here, please consider subscribing because it helps a small YouTuber like myself get into the algorithm of the YouTube machine to grow to love and to just be inspired to do these things because it brings me um, much, um, it brings me a lot of satisfaction that I can help people, but also help myself in the process. And so with that said, let's get back to the lesson. Down with it. All right, in these figures, you'll see how moving Z in relationship to Y, in these figures, you'll see how moving Z in relationship to X and Y from downward perspective further accentuates the sense of movement and directions we want to create in our figure work. Plus, um, let's go ahead and establish our X and Y and Z here just so we have a, a reminder of where we're at here. So this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. So the first one, start with our head and our torso, and then our arm. I'm just going back. And then it's like foreshortened. It's foreshortened um, the legs here. We're looking from the top here, so draw some hands here somewhere. That would be pretty much what we're going for here. Okay, so this is X. Pelvis is Y. You really can't see it. And then we have uh, Z. So if you elongate these, but still keeping that like foreshortening. And 
bending it more. And, uh, you know, it's great action when you're reading a comic, you know. I'm not sure. I don't read comics anymore. I'm not sure if they do this anymore. But, it's kind of, let's see here. There's a buttock. There's a leg. So it gives it a more dynamic fluidity to it. And you have that arc going on here um, of our gesture. And you can see it's, I mean, this is cool too. I like this, but this is cool. And then he's talking about um, twist and shout, uh, we can squeeze a little more life into our figures by playing around with the details, namely the wrist and ankle joints. Um, look back at the front ankle of the figures um, in the previous lesson. In the second figure, the ankle is much more tighter angle than the first. So let's take a look at that. So this is, um, as you can see, I mean, It's definitely because it's, it's bending more here. Um, it's definitely more more uh, appealing. We're talking about the same thing with the wrist. So let's draw, let's draw these wrists here. So basically, it's just it's just a, a wrist, fist, making a fist. And then twisting that wrist to give it more. More of an appeal here. Force, force works. As we try to maximize our efforts in bringing as much life into our figure work as possible, keep in mind that one of our most powerful tools is foreshortening, which adds depth and impact. Creating the illusion of depth in our drawings is crucial to creating action and movement in our figures. By forcing perspective, we can heighten the sense of depth and three-dimensionality in the final work. By comparing and contrasting these two figures, we see how bringing the foreground fist to the front in an extreme way makes it much more closer to us and pushes the rest of the body further back. It helps bring more three-dimensionality to the final shot, bringing more space to the charging figure. Uh, remember, in these figures, the farther, the farther centers of the masts are apart, the more energy the figure has. So by bringing forward the outstretched fist from the center of the figure's torso, we create movement. For another example, look how forward shortening. For another example, look how forward shortening the bent leg in figure G makes all the other parts of that figure come forward in space. All right, let's try this. Let's try drilling this. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with uh, my torso, starting my torso here, going into space here, and then we have a leg coming out here, this leg coming, goes back, this arm kind of is coming out bending that wrist. And then we have foreshortening going on here. Remember foreshortening, this things look shorter. Um, let's draw our head. And our 
fist is like right there. And usually what I do is I'll draw the fist first and then I'll connect them. It makes it easier. So right there. draw the fist larger it brings more dynamicism to the piece and it's more in your face so let's draw a big old fist like this big and it brings more impact into your drawing just like that. And even bringing this leg back here more. Even more. And then bring this leg out more. I know it's like the head is getting buried. Okay, so the shoulder comes out more too. The shoulder. And then. The head kind of gets buried. We can even go larger with the arm. With the, we can go larger with the fist. Let's go even larger. Elongating the torso, bringing it, stretching it back into, um, stretching it back into, uh, into space. Really, don't see it. It's pretty much only to see this, and so it's like. So it's really like coming at you. So, so that's one of the great um, things we, um, I'm, look. There's some shadow in there. So that was, that's one of the great takeaways I took from this is, um, elongate your torso and pelvis as, as far as possible without making it look just too distorted and um, stretching stuff out to make it to make it look more dynamic so um, thanks again for watching 
and God bless.